Hey guys, we're back for some more ladder grinding here for Standard. Um, and I wanted to let you know, I did make a couple changes here to the deck. So very excited with these changes. I think they're they're very helpful. Uh, but before I get into it, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And I do make videos every day. So please come back and enjoy more if you do like my content. And if you do like my content, please consider subscribing maybe dropping a comment or a like or sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like my content. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for your support. It does mean the world to me. Very, very happy to have you here. So let's get into the deck. A uh, couple changes here. I added three copies of Urbrask's Forge and I also upped the Manland count quite a bit here. Went up to four copies of Mistress Foundry and one copy of Myrix. Um, it didn't change the total land count, so we still have 21 lands, but we have quite a few more man lands here, and I'm hoping that that will work out. So far, it's been good. I ended up running a couple games last night after recording my last video, and the deck has gone 100% with the changes. So, you know, the overall uh, win rate there isn't 100%, but with the changes, it's I think it's like 4-0, so very happy with it. Uh, at any rate, let's get into some games. I think the... Let me see if there's any other changes I've made. I think it's just the addition of the Urbrask Forge. I did cut a copy of Squee. I think one copy of Feldon. And I think one copy of Play With Fire to make room for it. So that's felt so you know good so far. And then, of course, just the changes with the actual land count. So let's hop into some games. And very much hoping to make at least top 1,200 for the end of the month. <clears throat> have just a day or so here to get there, but I think we're hovering right around top 1200 Mythic, so it would be great to make top 1200. All right, opening hand looks great. We've got stuff to do. We have cards to draw into. Looks like we are up against the mirror match, or maybe this is Gruel. This looks more like maybe Gruel pump, but either way, I think we run out here with the Kumano. Uh, we could, I suppose, play with fire at the, the scamp if we think it's gonna get huge, but I think that Kumano is fine here. Now we could push with Feldon, or we could try to maybe take out the Scamp. Yeah, I, I think it's... Because we could set up another Kumano here also. We could, like, Kumano plus Play With Fire. And without any other guys down, like, I, what I'm worried about is the double damage from Cacophony Scamp, if they've got Pump on it. Otherwise, we just go Feldon and then set up for like lightning strike plus kumano or something like that or maybe play with fire um i'm not really sure i think i'm just going to go with feldon here just feel it out Okay, so they did have the rage. Yeah, that that was my concern because now they can push eight damage with the scamp. That's too bad. Yeah. So I think maybe the well, in hindsight, the move would have been to get rid of the scamp right away. So now we just die to a top deck. Um, okay. Okay. 
So I think we hold back Kumano, and then we can just go... I suppose we can go, like, Sokens in for blockers if we need to. We could also play with Fire plus Lightning Strike, just get him off the table. But that does drastically reduce our reach. I guess, yeah, I suppose we could just, like, hope they have nothing and then just burn out. I think I play with fire one of them. And then maybe if they have the pump, we have like lightning strike in response. And then just push. I guess if they have like another swift spear, they just win. But like we need to push damage, so I think I've got to just go face and hope they've got nothing. And then I think, yeah, we just. Unless they want to like hold this back, but. I think we just lightning strike. Okay, that's rough. <clears throat> if we can do enough damage on the... Like, if we can kill them on combat damage, then we don't just die to scamp. But we have to kill their swift spear here, so... And I don't think we have enough. Yeah, I think that was a mistake. Otherwise, we'd have to, like, hold removal and then, like, make a blocker, kill the blocker <laughs> before it could, like, do damage. But, yeah, it's unfortunately, this is just going to do it. No blockers, okay. Yeah, we don't have enough. So the move there, I suppose, would have just killing the scamp while it was uh, while it was out there before they buffed it up. Or at least holding the removal for when they pump it. Okay, this hand is not going to work. We need colored mana. And that looks a little bit better. I think we throw back one play with fire here. I think let's play with fire to set up our next turn. Let's just do it now, just so it doesn't get countered. I, I want to try to set up something to draw into. Yeah, that'll work. That's pretty funny. <laughs> We've got a good hand for Deep Cavern Bat, that's for sure. I think we do just want to go Code Breaker here. They probably don't block. Um, I guess they could if they wanted to, but... I'm sure they'd like to crack back for some uh, potential lifelink. Gonna say, I guess the downside is that they have like Rafine and they could pump it, so. Now we need like a land and then double end the festivities, so that. Yeah, maybe we should have killed it when we, when we had the chance. Okay, we did draw into Lightning Strike, which is super helpful here.
And this is also awkward on blockers too. So like, we have to like main phase kill the deep cavern bat. And I think we do want to play around the counter spells. So I think we do just lightning strike it now. They've got full knowledge here, but we could attack in. Yeah, so we can't really push. I guess we could sacrifice Phoenix Chick to push three damage. I'm actually kind of okay with that. Give them the option. Got Mishra's. So the nice thing here is we can attack in and play the land afterwards to take out the Rafine. If they've got counter magic though, it's super awkward if they have like no more lies. I think it's worth going for though. They probably know something's up. But like if we can take out the Rafine, it's a huge game for us. Okay, and they just go for the throat. So I think we probably, ugh. Like we wanna go face, but I think Keeping them off some land is, is not a bad idea. Limiting their Rafine triggers here is also pretty decent. So I think lightning striking here is, is maybe okay. Okay, can't afford mechanized warfare, but we can push with foundry. Question here is do we want to like turn off their tokens to prevent them from getting like a big attack with multiple card draw? I think we maybe wait a turn and just push with Foundry again. It's not ideal, but I think um, otherwise I suppose we're just not doing much. And they had the Aganjo.
Yeah, I think dealing with that Rafine is just going to be almost impossible. Yeah, I think this one's going to do it, unfortunately. So it's possible that we need to rework the land a little bit more. Maybe the Mirix was a little bit too aggressive with only 21 land. I could see maybe like increasing the land count and keeping more of like the, the man lands. Um, but I like at least going up to like three or four copies of uh, Mishra's, um, Mishra's Foundry. That one definitely seems like a nice, a nice change. So far, it's been a little bit rough tonight, but... <laughs> oh, wow, look at this. We've got all four copies of End the Festivities. I have not seen a whole lot of Boros Convoke here on Ladder, so maybe it's been kind of sort of shifting away from that. I think it's still fairly well represented in the um, in the format. So I think I'm going to keep here. I, this deck doesn't really mulligan super well, so keeping threats up feels good. And if it's mostly just blue-white control, these are pretty bad. Like, they can still do a little bit of work against, like, Wandering Emperor, but they're definitely not at their best. All right, so I do think we go for Play With Fire here. Okay, they've got the demolition field ready for our foundry. Now we can go ahead and pitch this mountain, I think. See if we can find a little bit more action. Okay, we've got the full set of AoE, not doing a whole lot here. But this specific matchup was part of the reason that I ended up putting in three copies of Urbrask's Forge. And if the whole format is like really, really just clogged with these sort of dirtily um, blue-white control decks, then maybe going up to a full play set feels right. So we are walking in, into Wandering Emperor here, but if they've got it, we can at least take it out with End the Festivities. Okay, they've got the lockdown. I think I'd rather run out the Ronam, uh, the Feldon here as over over the um, Mishra's Foundry, even though we could get a successful attack, but they, they could have so many different removal spells here. I think I just wanna go for Feldon. And then I think it's start, time to start like using some of these removal. We've got so many. So I'll start with the worst one, the Tectonic Hazard.
Here again, we could be walking to uh, Wandering Emperor, but I think that's fine. Yep, there she is. I am the Emperor of Kamigawa, and I will protect my people. And then I think we hold one of the mountains here in case we draw another Epicure and can filter it away. I'll be back. Alright, now they could have no more lies, so we play the mountain to play around it. Um, and I guess we could start using some of these in the festivities. They're at 13. But I think there's a decent chance they've got removal here, so I don't really feel the need to let them know exactly what's up with our hand. Okay, rage is nice here. We could also um, like double festivities before attacking to make sure this is big enough to kill their anchorage. And it's super unlikely that like monstrous rage would actually land on the swift spear if we use it now. So I guess we you could either go for like the monstrous rage play and like hope it works or like double festivities pre-combat. But then like, again, it's so awful if they have um, any kind of removal. But like, we don't have a whole lot of options either. So I think I'm gonna hold the festivities here and just go for the rage play. Again, only if they, if they trigger it. Otherwise, I'm happy to just keep pecking them for one. Okay, that's gonna be hard to get through. Yeah, because most likely they had the march in their hand. I suppose they could have drawn into it, but either way. So we could try to go for like a hand refill here. It's actually not the worst idea. Um, I guess let's start by playing in the festivities into a morph. Just to kind of get some of the stuff out of our hand. And we've already got the cost reduced pretty heavily here. So 
I think, yeah, let's hold the festivities. Again, they could make like some tokens potentially with like Wandering Emperor. Although we're getting pretty close to just losing to this Hornlock Whale, so. Okay, we've got another code breaker, but now we're forced to, to chump this hornlock whale. Um, I guess, I suppose it's possible we could try to like trade with it, but if they've got any kind of, any tricks, any nonsense, we're just done. And I guess we could go for like the Hail Mary play here. So I suppose if we like end the festivities this goes to four, that's five, and then just try to go for the Monstrous Rage. If they have like nothing, the chance of them having nothing is pretty low. But I think we're kind of at that point where we have to kind of just try for it. Oh, you know what, I forgot. I should have, end, I should have cast End the Festivities first. I think there's a pretty low chance this is actually gonna work. Yeah, they've got Wandering Emperor. So that's going to do it, unfortunately. Whew, yeah, not a good set, unfortunately. The ultimate nemesis blue-white control definitely has uh, knocked down the rank quite a bit here. But let's take a look at the stats overall. All right, so the deck is currently 64% win rate. It is 14 wins and eight losses. Um, with the the change here, I guess it went uh, five and three. So that's with kind of the, the additions here. But I think if I were to make more changes, and I probably will, so you'll, you'll probably see it here in the next video, I think upping maybe to a full play set of Urbrask's Forge. I still think the land, I might have to figure out a little bit whether add more land or... Maybe like shave the Mirix, possibly go to like three foundry if we're gonna keep it at 21 land. Um, but I'd love your feedback and definitely, you know, share in the comments if you have suggestions on changes to the deck that might help it. Um, or if you've run it yourself and if, you know, there's cards that are working, um, I definitely wanna help the community as much as possible. And I'm, you know, by no means an expert. I just like this kind of deck. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate you. And we'll see you next time.